for any of you who know me and the music I create, you know that I love risers. I love them. There's such an easy way to add tension, add growth, add build to your track. And the reason we do this is because, well, for a couple of things, because sometimes we don't want to change anything in the track as it is. We just want to add more tension and feel that it's growing without developing any musical aspects. Uh, secondly, it's kind of a cinematic stalwart. You know, it's something that we use all the time to add this kind of cinematic trailerized feel. And thirdly, it sounds amazing and it's so easy. Um, so today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the riser by Air Music Technology. Now, this is uh, a synth-based riser generator, and for me, it's a bit of a game changer uh, because it creates those synths, those synth-based risers that I don't necessarily do. I often create a riser using one of those stringed instruments or my voice or you know organic recorded audio so having the opportunity to create noise sweeps sine wave sweeps all these different filtered risers through a synth is huge so let's take a look Okay, here we go. Um, this is the riser. As you open it up in Logic, it comes with its own handy little plug-in. There we go, Air Music Technology, the riser, stereo. That's that's the beast. So I'm just going to talk about this first of all. You know, I love the simplicity of, of this whole layout. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, for me, it's all about not just feeling inspired by these plugins and these effects, but it's also about feeling like they make your work easier. So for instance, before I dive into anything, I've got the default patch loaded up and I've got my keyboard in front of me. I'm just gonna pre press the C and we'll see. <laughs> I mean, job done, right? Uh, I mean, that's fantastic. Now, what I like about this is they've thought about what we want as composers and uh, producers. They've thought, you know what? These guys want to be able to create long risers, short risers, rips, you know, beds, all out the same thing. So they have said, as you can see down the bottom left here, lower octaves e equals slow long rises, higher octaves, fast short rises. So let's go to the higher one. I mean, amazing. That's kind of like uh, reminiscent of Daft Punk's homework, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, and then if we get it, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go down two octaves. I mean, this is very exciting. Park, there is a motorcycle coming down the motorway. <laughs> I mean, it's just brilliant. And this is just the default setting. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got the generators, the filter, the amp, the effects, the reverb, the LFO, A and B, and decay and master. And little tip boxes. So the nice thing here is, you know, all risers are sync based to the tem tempo of your door. So when it's got these pumper rates and the rates of the LFO, the rates are synced. So if you're working in 295 BPM, that pumper is going to be going at three sixteenths in that tempo, which is great. You know, sometimes it's a real hassle to have to, you know, try and sync these things after the fact. Okay, next. I want to talk about this type of thing because I'm going to be totally honest, like synth uh, GUIs intimidate me. I, I understand the principles of what's going on, but it intimidates me. It's much the same as when I go to a recording studio and you go, oh my gosh, look at all these knobs. Not like that. You know, you see all of these knobs going up in this channel and you, and you look at it one by one and you go, yeah, okay, I know what each one of these is doing, but it still is like, ah, <laughs> you know, so much to do, you know, oh, cheese, grom it. Uh, and it's the same with this. So. I'm going to do this as if you're like me and you find this stuff intimidating because there are some of you in the audience who are going to be absolute synth nerds being like, 
I know exactly how I'm going to program this beast. Uh, whereas me, I look at this and go, hmm, okay. So this is this is kind of a review of it as if you don't really know synths particularly well, uh, which I think is really important. So let's talk about this. You've got these chord, noise, and sweep generators. And what this does and it is each of these aspects here has an A and B and it has these little bars, right? Which you can move up and down. You can see this line, this progression. So this is essentially saying this factor volume will start at point A. Very quiet. And th actually I'm going to get back up so it's a bit quicker. And then as it picks up, it picks up. So you can do all of that wonderful automation within here. You know, if I just did this, the sweep stays quiet. And if I do that, you can't hear anything. This is just the noise. So useful. This is your chord. Admittedly, I'm not a huge fan of the chords, but you can, of course, alter this. <laughs> and then you I mean, that is really cool. I mean, this type of stuff to do separately out of the box, out of this little user interface, it doesn't take time, but it does add up if you're layering in quite a few different filters, quite a few different sweeps. And this is what's great about this. You can change how each of these generators interacts with the rest of it. So let's just take a look at each one of these points. I'm going to put all of these down. Naughty. You know, keep it like this shape shape let's go in straight in for the for this sweep so you can change what type of what type of oscillator you're choosing square saw you know <laughs> i'm a fan of saw uh saw waves because they they have texture and interest to them so there's there's a lot going on just here right so Volume, I think, speaks for itself. So, but what does this do? Sweep oscillator gain LFO depth. Yeah. <laughs> now, what that does is that controls these chaps down the bottom, these LFO A and LFO B, and the rate. And that's where you've got this A and B. And you can change the rate of these things and the depth of them as you go. <laughs> oh look, and it creates downers too. I mean, this is just, this is awesome. The issue I have with this is, I want to save myself some time, right? So. I want to save myself some time. The problem I'm going to have with this is this is too much fun to play with. <laughs> too much fun. So yeah, anyway, go, going back to the LFO. So moving this changes, increases it, moves it more towards LFO A, more towards LFO B, as far as I'm aware. Um, I may be wrong, and it wouldn't be the first time I've done a review of these things, and I've been wrong on what, a, what, what an aspect is doing. But this is what I'm gleaning from it. So that's LFO, starting on LFO A. Moving into LFO B. Cool. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. So this is pretty straightforward. Changing the volume. Again, this is, this is where the LFO is controlling the frequency of your um, sweep and 
and the shape of it. You don't have to have the, these things changing, you know? It could be this pulsing noise, which is great. I'm a fan of that. So let's move it. Let's move into the noise. This is, again, pretty much straightforward. Okay, I presume if I change the pitch, change the shape. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so much fun. I mean, this is this kind of reminds me of Wayne's World for some reason. She will be mine. Oh yes, she will be mine. Uh, and you could start it as noise. It's like Star Trek. And move into that lovely great tone. Or you can keep it like more traditional noise sweep. Awesome. Uh, and same for the chord. Well, that's a beautiful chord, isn't it? <laughs> Let's move. Let's move the brightness up. And then the oscillation shape for that kind of like twisted sci-fi sound. And again, don't forget that you can change the shape of the automation. So it doesn't have to be a, a straight line. It can be more of a, a, a whoosh up. So if we go back to all of this and then just have it like this. It's really cool. So I think we're kind of kind of getting the gist of this 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 generator section. Now what you can apply here is the filters to each of these noises. So what I'm gonna I'm just gonna shift this up a little bit so we can hear it hear the sounds straight away. Again, you can change the low pass filter, high pass filters. Ooh, there we go. So, understanding what that filter is doing is really important. So it's it's essentially opening up what frequencies it lets through, through the cutoff, and then the resonance is what frequencies it kind of like amps up, picks up, and then you can have to add distortion as well. I go for a low pass. It starts high and it moves, moves gradually passes through. And you can control, you know, you don't have to have the filter on any of them. You just have the generators. Um, and obviously the amp is the master controls really, isn't it? That's if you wanted to have, if you want your volume on all of these to be straight away, you could then have the volume control on your amp and move the panning from left to right. I mean, that always kind of freaks me out when you're wearing headphones and it moves from left to right. It just, just feels a bit odd. And then delay and reverbs kind of speak for themselves. Decay is sort of how long. Well, actually, ah, <laughs> yes. Okay, I was hoping it would do that. So, decay. This is the level of the decay. So it allows after the note is whooshed to its final point, it kind of as if it's driving past you. And the pitch. how much the pitch bends down afterwards. It's kind of a mini Doppler effect. Uh, filter, let's hear the filter. We'll see what see what's, it's gonna be doing. Okay, so I, th I presume it's applying uh, these low pass, high pass filters 
on the decay which actually is a great tool i mean i'm a, i'm actually a huge fan of these things cut into silence and allowing something else to do the job but you don't have to do that so I think you've kind of got the gist of this. Now, it does, of course, come with a ton of uh, a ton of its own settings. Chord Fade 2. Oh, Stranger Things. I like that. I mean, that's great in, in itself. Classic pitch rises. Oh, you're ready for this. And then, you know, this, I mean, it's, it's kind of classic EDM stuff, but as a trailer composer, this is going to be fantastic for hybrid stuff, for sound design. I mean, it's just brilliant, you know, this uh, chopped noise fall. For all of these transitions that I do, you know, if you're, if you're working on a TV spot, then you want all these interesting noises flying around you to kind of give your track movement. Because if you're doing sound design, for example, you don't have the you don't have the leisure of having harmony and melody as your interesting points. You have percussion, you know, you have texture, timbre, rhythm, silence. You have the other aspects of music, you know, there's seven of them. Uh, so taking out harmony and melody, you're left with the other five, which are uh, tempo, texture, timbre, silence, and rhythm, I believe. Uh, so this type of tool is fantastic for that. Uh, so what I would like to end this little uh, review on is how can I use this? So I'm just going to quickly come up with a little idea. I'm going to go to... Um, ooh, I, I forget you can access it like this, but we're not going to because it didn't work. Uh, I'm going to go to the default patch because I think that is awesome. I'm going to load in a couple of other things, um, if I can. Uh, I'm going to load in um, Metropolis Arc, some strings, I think, because I love the strings in Metropolis Arc. I think they sound fantastic. Where are my orchestra, strings? In fact, no, let's go for strings low. There, short patch. Where is it? Spiccato octaves. There's some terrible, terrible latency going on here, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, that's probably my finest, fine, finest moment of playing to this date, but you get the gist. So I'm just going to open this up again. Um, I don't know why it's giving me the default. Uh, oh, I know why, because I haven't made it up. So we're going to go, I'm going to access my arc a different way. High spic octaves. So just kind of make my life that much easier. Uh, we're going to double up. Ooh. Right. And let's just keep those velocities the same. I think that sounds cool. Right, that's, that was Command R for any of you wondering. That was a, a, a little cheeky number that I didn't always knew existed. So let's see how this feels. I, mean, I quite like that. So first of all, I'm just going to bounce this in place as a little idea, and I'm going to cut this out. I could do this on the um, on the channels themselves, but I'm feeling a bit lazy. Now we'll go the other way. That's the business. Right, let's cut that up in as well. Right, 
I mean, I wouldn't say it's my finest work, but it has promise. Um, and I feel like it's it's exciting me enough to get me moving. Uh, ooh. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into uh, Keep Forest Thing, if I can find it, music, sample libraries, libraries, sample libraries. There we go. Let's just grab a trailer hit, shall we? <laughs> That's the business. That is the business. I mean, remember, this is kind of just there for us to... Just get some idea of how useful this can be. Well, that's early. There it is. Okay, the other thing is it needs to cut off. To... It's cut off there. I like that. I'm not sure I'm digging the, the pitch rise. You know, I would probably take that out. I mean, it's, I mean, I think it sounds pretty cool. It's one of those things that it's a it's a it's a finishing touch that you would add. You know, I would if I was going to use risers at this early stage, I would just be sketching out the entire track as uh, sound effects, so hits, rises, stuff like this. Um, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a sense of what I would how I would be approaching this. Now, I would like to have. Um, Rhythmical crescendo. <laughs> Let's do. Ooh. No. Right. Is that going to control this? There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Cool. Awesome. Let's turn that up a little bit. That'll do. It's a little bit, a little bit out of time. <laughs> so let's hear it with the other risers. Just want to add one more thing in. Um, where am I? Not those. See, in Keep Forest, you got all of these things anyway. You got some rises that I mean. Listen to this. I mean, that's basically the riser you could create with the riser, which is great and exciting. Um, I just want a, a little boom, little boom. Oh. Hello. Just to start this off, really, if anything. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. That ruined, that completely ruined it. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to leave it there because otherwise I'm, you're going to see me just do a whole track and it's going to be very distracting for you because the whole purpose of this was to talk you through the riser and how you can use it in your track. I mean, this was a very, very simple way to use it. I mean, I just used three. I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing other than I wanted two long risers to do different things and then a quicker riser to kind of rip it up a little bit. I'd probably add some uh, percussion roll here as well or, or maybe a couple of big hits da -da 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 into it. 
but just to kind of fade out. This is The Rise Up by Air Music Technology. Thanks, guys.